area the size of a city block or quote unquote a minor modification is really appalling. The amount of units, yes. Yes. The amount of units the proposed developments will bring to the neighborhood. You'll mess up my time. Please. The amount of units the proposed developments will bring to the neighborhood are comparable to the neighborhood rezoning and that I've been involved in in East Harlem, in East New York, in Jerome Avenue, Far Rockaway, and Inwood. Areas that span an entire section of this city, not just one block. In those plans, and I know personally, they all went through a real public review process with you and with you learned. The fact that these proposed developments are not subject to the same review is unjust. As a public servant dedicated to promoting positive impacts in all communities, I really am horrified that the Department of City Planning is allowing a project of this magnitude to proceed without adequate public review. ULIP, on the other hand, would allow the community and elected officials to work with the applicants to develop a plan that would have minimal negative impacts and maximize the benefits to the community. Even that's controversial, but that's what we should be doing. DCP believes that these applications constitute, quote unquote, a minor modification, unquote. However, this is a staff level determination and the difference between a major and minor modification is not spelled out anywhere. The rules cited by DCP staff as to what constitutes a major versus minor modification refer to what is permissible during ULIP, not after ULIP. Just because this is long standing practice does not mean it's correct. It's not right. Council Member Chen and I have been working on a more equitable solution, a zoning text amendment, as I'm sure she told you, that would require any development in the two bridges large scale residential development to obtain a special permit, which would mean full ULIP. We submitted this application to the Department of City Planning in January of this year. In August, we made a requested we made the requested revisions and submitted an EIS prepared according to a framework outlined by DCP in an earlier meeting. I want to thank the city council staff for their support. Unfortunately, we still have not had our application referred out for public review. The fact that this application is not being considered at the same time right now as these applications is unfair to everyone, including the commission. I would like to state again, what I've been asking DCP for for many months now, to refer out our zoning text amendment application for public review. Our text amendment would subject these proposed developments to the public review they ought to have. My office and the local elected officials, and many of them are here today, who represent this community have been very vocal about our opposition to this so-called minor modification process. We have communicated at length with the Department of City Planning about their determination that this is minor modification. We don't think it is. We do not believe that DCP's rationale is sufficient given the impact these projects will have on this neighborhood. There are facts. These proposed developments will have a negative impact and they will drastically and permanently change the community. This area, it is currently a large scale residential development, was once also governed by the urban renewal plan. That plan aimed to eliminate blight, provide housing for low and moderate income residents, and provide recreational, commercial, and community facility uses with high quality urban design and open space. When the urban renewal plan was in effect, over 1,300 units of affordable and senior housing, a supermarket, a pharmacy, a community center, they were all built. Since this plan expired in 2007, an 80-story luxury <coughs> condo tower replaced the supermarket and pharmacy, it does have a um, affordable with it, but when you look at it, you go, oh my goodness, that could be the entire community. They were the only ones in the neighborhood. Now developers are taking advantage of the FAR created when the urban renewal plan expired to develop projects that are contrary to the goals of the original plan and do not meet the findings of the large scale residential development special permit. DCP believes that the proposed developments require no new findings as they state that the proposed buildings would not require any additional height or setback waivers. However, the addition of three enormous towers fundamentally alters the nature of this district. The city grants large-scale development waivers based on an evaluation of the development as a whole. 
not based on individual buildings contained therein. Earlier waivers may no longer be appropriate given the proposed site plan modifications, <coughs> which is precisely why this project is a major, major modification and should go through EULA. There are some findings that I want to bring to your attention, and they should be met based on this proposal. Number one, 78-313C, such distribution, this is what it says, quote, such distribution or location will not unduly increase the bulk of buildings, density of population, or intensity of use in any block to the detriment of the occupants of the buildings in the block or nearby blocks, unquote. No, no, no. The proposed project would bring over 5,000 new residents to this area. The commission must find that the new overall distribution and location of uses meets this finding. 78-313B, quote, such distribution or location will not affect adversely any other zoning lots outside the development by restricting access to light and air or by creating traffic congestion, unquote. No, no, no. The commission <laughs> must find that the new overall distribution and location of uses meets this finding. The DEIF, which is the Draft uh, Environmental Impact Statement, details negative impacts on light and air, as well as traffic on this neighborhood. I find it hard to believe that you can make this finding given the significant adverse impacts. Mm -hmm. Same number, G states, quote, the modification of height and setback will not impair the essential character of the surrounding area and will not have adverse effects upon the access to light air and privacy of adjacent property. No, no, no. This neighborhood is a community of low and moderate income residents. There are seniors, they're disabled. They are moderate in height in the developments that they live in, no more than 26 stories. The proposed developments will be triple the height and as mentioned in their own DEIS, will have adverse effect on the access to light due to the shadows cast on the area. The commission must find that the new overall distribution and location of uses meets this finding. I think it's improbable that you will determine that the new site plan complies with this finding given the dramatic impact on the character of the area. As you can see, what I'm saying is the DCP made a mistake in determining that these proposed developments were a minor modification. The proposed projects are not even remotely similar to what was previously approved and built on these sites. Then we even meet the findings previously set in prior approvals. As you know, the Lower East Side has been a home for many immigrant groups. It has provided opportunities for groups to live and grow in the city where it's really hard to survive. This community has a population that is primarily people of color, many disabled and many older, as I have indicated. This is very interesting. The percentage of disabled and elderly residents in two bridges exceeds the rates in the rest of Manhattan, as well as the five boroughs. These groups will be very negatively affected if the proposed developments were to proceed. As you know, one of the new buildings will cancel lever over a building of low-income seniors, making sure that the permanent decommissioning of 10 senior units, and there's, right now they're vacant. Why in the world we would have one vacant affordable unit right now of senior housing? I don't know. I will leave the discussion of specific mitigation measures to others. However, what has been proposed is entirely inadequate. Were this zoning with a EULA, the community would not only have a voice in the process, they would be appropriately resourced to cope with the coming development. There is not nearly enough resource allocation to the surrounding community given the scale of these developments on a single city block. The inward rezoning, which I am intimately familiar with as you are, comprising of 59 blocks with several thousand units of new housing, 40% of which will be affordable, had a comprehensive plan to provide resources to the community, as did East Harlem. The rezoning will require HPD to spearhead an anti-displacement initiative to protect tenants in the ones that we've already worked on. The rezoning in the other ones we've worked on will expand hiring and women of women MBE, WBE, women and minority business enterprises, and in some cases, $200 million for the community or more in other instances. When viewed in this light, 
the minor modification process and the accompanying mitigation measures are not adequate. That's not even close. It is my understanding that there is no time limit as far as the commission reviewing and voting on these developments. Given the scale of them and the negative impacts that are sure to come, and given what you will be hearing at length from the community at this hearing, thank you all for being here. I ask that you take the time to carefully consider everything and not rush the vote on these applications. These developments will have an impact that will affect this community forever. So in closing, I want to again request that the Department of City Planning refer out our text amendment application for public review immediately as our application is complete, despite what others might say, and should be considered alongside these applications. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I will apologize Joined by Assemblymember Yelene Niu. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name is Yelene, and I represent Manhattan's Two Bridges neighborhood in the New York State Legislature. I want to thank you for the opportunity to submit comments regarding the Two Bridges large-scale residential development. Uh, further known as the LSRD, in response to the draft environmental impact statement. I submit these comments to register serious concern about the proposed luxury development. The three developers seeking modifications to the LSRD are Cherry Street Owner LLC, JDS Development Group and Two Bridges Senior Apartments LP Affiliate, Two Bridges Associates LP, CIM Group and L&M Development Partners, and LE1 Sub LLC. Since the announcement of these developments, the Lower East Side community, including Community Board 3, tenant associations, and residents have raised many questions regarding the LSRD plan. At multiple community meetings on these developments, residents have voiced their opposition to the LSRD plan and the proposed modifications. The City Planning Commission previously wrote that the proposed development was significant, yet still determined the plans as quote-unquote minor modifications. The current proposal would result in over 2.5 million gross square feet of development, with 2,775 mostly market rate dwelling units entering our neighborhood, containing in, contained in three towering luxury high-rise buildings. Clearly, large development of this scale permanently changes our community. It should be as equally clear that the community deserves a detailed and clear mitigation plan that focuses on community-based planning because of the tremendous impact these developments have on our community. Skipping the EULA process by marking these modifications as minor deprives the voices of the New Yorkers who reside in the development area and local electeds of official decision-making power. This is unacceptable because in any land use decision, the most important part is community engagement, which the city often sorely lacks. More than 5,800 new residents are estimated to enter our community from this development. The Lower East Side has faced a construction boom in recent years, from Essex Crossing to the ongoing Extel developments at 250 South Street, among many others. Essex Crossing includes 1,000 residential apartments as well as commercial and community space. The Extel project is a large luxury development which includes residential and commercial space. In addition, the New York City Housing Authority, NYCHA, announced plans to develop market rate and affordable housing at LaGuardia houses adjacent to the Two Bridges neighborhood. Together, these development projects will bring thousands of new residents to the neighborhood, further stressing the community's infrastructure like affordability, schools, parking, and transit. The DEIS fails to consider the severity of the strain on our community when including yet another luxury development clearly evident in what little mitigation efforts DEIS contains. Many constituents of mine have complained about the health and quality of life impacts that the construction has on the community. The proposed construction period is between two and a half to three years for each building. Yet, the DEIS fails to commit clear, detailed mitigation efforts for many quality of life and health impacts both during the construction and operation. For example, sanitation is one of the top complaints that our office receives near construction sites. We receive cases regarding piles of garbage, food from the construction workers thrown on the streets and sidewalks, and unidentifiable liquid pools near sites. Emissions from construction equipment, in addition to dust and particulates, floating around degrade air quality and exacerbate health problems. Construction noise is inevitable, and a top complaint, which affects the quality of life for many of our residents. 
especially those who have jobs throughout the night. The proposed construction mitigations are vague and nondescript. They do little to assure our community that true mitigation will be provided. Our community deserves a transparent and detailed plan for construction mitigation in which we are engaged. The developers should not be allowed to proceed until they present a plan that reflects our needs, especially because construction is estimated to be at least two and a half years. Given all of the development both proposed and already underway, the Lower East Side will see an increase in the number of families living in the community that our current schools, many already with capacity issues, will struggle to serve. The only proposed mitigation efforts remotely related to our schools are unclear funding for maintenance and upgrades at various playgrounds. It should be obvious that maintenance and upgrades of playgrounds do little, if anything at all, to resolve or mitigate the core issues from the development such as overcrowding in classrooms and a dire lack of school resources. Higher student, um, Higher student to teacher ratios mean less quality education for each student, which is detrimental to their futures. Our community needs real solutions to adequately meet the educational needs of our community, particularly in the future, in the future if an influx of new families were to enter our school district. Even the construction of Essex Street School is not certain. The need must be determined by the city and the SAA. There is a clear need in our district now more than ever from these projects for quality school seats. At the very least, the city and the SCA must commit to meeting our increased need if the city intends on proceeding with the plans in addition to other actual mitigation solutions. Four towers, each over 60 stories, wow. with one reaching 80 stories, are planned for this construction. These towers are unprecedented in size and will be the largest towers in our neighborhood. They will cast massive shadows on our NYCHA complexes and affordable housing developments. Constituents near the ongoing Extel Towers construction site call to file complaints about the massive shadows and construction impacts which severely degrade their quality of life and health. Lack of sunlight can cause significant health problems such as vitamin D deficiency, deterioration of mental health, or sleep issues. Without sunlight and green light, which is vital to, vital to air quality and quality of life, people will struggle. The current mitigation impacts related to loss of sunlight merely affects select playgrounds and parks. These mitigation efforts are clearly not sufficient to address permanent damages our community will experience, like the loss of sunlight for residents in nearby buildings, altered sight lines, or potential health problems. The plans must adhere to more community input and address the problems these shadows will cause. The loss of neighborhoods Pathmark Supermarket, formerly located on Cherry and Pike Street, was a heavy blow to the Two Bridges community. This supermarket offered affordable grocery options to the surrounding community, and many of our constituents relied on it for their daily shopping needs. Extel is now developing the site of the former Pathmark into a tower similar to the development in the DEIS. The need for accessible, healthy food remains unaddressed. Furthermore, we continue to be concerned about small business displacement potentially caused by these towers. The demographics of our neighborhood will change from this development and have a significant impact on the economy of the area. Many of the new residents will have higher income levels with differing wants and needs. The analysis thus far does not take into account the value of our neighborhood's small businesses which provide language accessible services and our community's reliance on them. The city must propose solutions to prevent displacement of the shops that serve our community. The city committed to a goal of 2.5 acres of open space per 1,000 residents. However, the proposed projects lower the open space ratio from, from 0.897 acres per 1,000 residents to 0.831 per 1,000 residents. Clearly, this is far below the city's goals. Open space in Manhattan becomes scarcer and scarcer every day, largely in part due to the rampant overdevelopment. For metropolitan areas like New York City, more open spaces are linked to happier and healthier communities. The opportunity to, co to hold community-oriented events, interact with others, or exercise in an open space is invaluable. Our community must preserve our current open spaces and create even more open spaces rather than take away what little we have. Lower Manhattan, especially the Two Bridges community, was heavily impacted by Hurricane Sandy. Two Bridges and other parts of the Lower East Side experienced flooding, power outages, and additional disruptions due to the storm. Impacts on water infrastructure, including sewage treatment and storm drainage, also remained inadequately addressed. The lack of resiliency-related efforts in the DEIS shows a failure to adhere to the ongoing efforts by the city's Office for Recovery and Resiliency. The current proposals do not adequately take into account the Lower Manhattan Coastal Resiliency and East Side Coastal Resiliency projects. The developments do not fit within our community in the slightest, even on this vital element. The proposed buildings have been found to impact our neighborhood streets and transportation infrastructure. The already strained nearby subway stations will see an increase in usage as these projects come online, including the East Broadway subway station on the F line 
and the Grand Street Station on the BND line. East of Essex, there's only one real stop that can service the Two Bridges area. In addition, the Delancey Essex station is the only station in the area with an elevator. The only mitigation effort presented in the replacement of, is the replacement of staircases and installation of ADA accessible elevators at the East Broadway F train. Accessible transportation is an important priority to our community and surely a step in the right direction. However, it does little to resolve the core issue of our overburdened transportation system. However, in fact, more inaccessible, more accessible transportation results in heavier congestion and does nothing to solve the core issues at hand. Furthermore, many of our seniors and mobility impaired community members frequently utilize our much overburdened bus lines. Accessibility improvements on subway lines do not address the increased strain on our bus lines in addition to increased usage on our roads. Our community also faces heavy automobile traffic congestion and parking space problems. Most new residents who live in the luxury towers will have higher incomes than the residents who live there now. Higher incomes mean more flexibility with transit options. These new residents will not rely on public transit as our community does and may opt to drive cars or utilize ride-sharing apps. Solutions to handle the consequences of increased automobile traffic like road repavement and repair or traffic congestion relief are not sufficiently addressed in the DEIS. While the elevators and replacement of staircases has been long requested, one stop with accessibility and improvements is not nearly enough. All of our public transportation options should be accessible and the mitigation efforts should allow our transportation infrastructure to handle both the current and future stress on our transit system. The proposed development would bring nearly 2,100 market rate units to our community. Currently, only 25% of the total units, approximately 694 units, are expected to be quote-unquote affordable with availability for households with incomes ranging from $37,560 to $112,680 a year. The median income in this area is $30,771. Even for the lowest range of affordable options, quote unquote, it would be impossible for many of our families to even be eligible to apply. The city's mandatory inclusionary housing, the MIH, and zoning for quality and affordability commits to building and preserving 200,000 affordable residential units. It is critical that the city protect the current stock of affordable housing and secure additional affordable housing units. But the city should also take into consideration what affordability truly means. It seems obvious that units at the lowest bracket, which is set significantly above the median income for the neighborhood, cannot be considered as truly affordable. Not only do the minimum income requirements exclude our community, but the development of 2,100 market rate units versus 694 quote unquote affordable units is an incredibly unsettling difference. Even disregarding the exclusionary income requirements, the city should not find this ratio acceptable if it is committed to preserving and building affordable housing. In addition, plans for the relocation of the seniors in the affordable senior units remain unclear. The city should work to clarify the plans to preserve these senior affordable units and create a detailed language accessible plan for the 19 seniors at Rutgers Slip who will be displaced during construction. Displacing any person in such a manner can be jarring, but it is especially dangerous for seniors. In a scenario like this, our top priority must never be luxury development. It must be securing the well-being of our citizens. Furthermore, the near 2,100 market rate units heighten residential displacement in our neighborhood. The lack of sufficient affordable housing, including the two bridges <laughs> for SRD and the potential housing displacement it may cause, continue to be top community concerns that we share. The Lower East Side, particularly the two bridges area, already lacks the affordable housing needed to meet the demand of the neighborhood. I, along with our elected colleagues, have called on the city to apply ULERP to the current Two Bridges LSRD because ULERP includes significant community engagement, which is the word that were, was used, and the proposed modifications are not minor. Such calls have been turned down. In the absence of a thorough land use review process, we believe that <coughs> proposed developments have severe consequences for our community. Unaddressed damages to our quality of life, lack of feasible and clear mitigation efforts to alleviate pressure in our infrastructure like school seats, transit, quality of life, or affordable housing, and a blatant disregard for community input must not be forgotten. The CPC must not allow these projects to proceed. This EIS and other work by the city must deeply consider the consequences a massive development project like this has on our community. The city must further engage our community and meet our needs before proceeding. Big developers are not more important than people in our community.
Thank you for the opportunity. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.